Here's what's coming up on the show. So I gave Cook Holding a go with a sub who I'd met through uh, Fab Swingers, but that was the very, very first time. And I was like, it was almost like a sexual awakening, really. I can't really kind of term it uh, any other way than that. So my husband is not is not into um, any sort of cuckolding, certainly the kind of humiliation aspect of that. He loves to watch, but isn't doesn't want to sort of be humiliated, doesn't want to be made to feel inferior or anything like that. But once I'd sort of tried this out for OnlyFans, I was so, so taken with it that he's quite happy for me to just sort of explore that with other guys. And lots of men are quite happy to identify themselves as cooks and they're quite happy to feature on the page. I told my mum first, it was actually over Christmas and I'd got a bit drunk um, and I just decided to kind of come out with this. I wasn't planning on telling her. Um, And her first word was, it was quite funny, she said, does your husband know? I'm like, (laughs) yeah, he knows, yeah. (laughs) Like she thought I was doing all of this in secret. You are now listening to the Venus Cuckolders podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Go to venuscuckoldress.com. You'll find the new Queen's Quarters fan destination. Book a one-to-one chat with me, listen to the private podcast, and even get access to my secret Snapchat group, where I share some of my most intimate encounters. Now sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let's dive right into this episode. Welcome everyone to this show. I'm your host Venus. This is going to be awesome. I have such a great guest today. Her name is Rosa and she goes by the dual labels of hot wife and mistress. Mm -hmm. And she also talks a little bit about having friends with cuck benefits. So Find out what that's all about. Big shout out to Dimitri, previous guest of the show, who suggested Rosa as a guest for the show, as well as Oliver, who is in my helpful cuck tier group, my supporter group, and uh, he suggested her as well. So, and you know what? Great suggestion. She's awesome. So much fun. You're going to love this show today. But first, I just want to say, uh, how about that last episode? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Pagan is amazing. So if you didn't catch the last episode, um, my friend Pagan was on the show and he is a uh, black bull and he was talking about how he got together with this couple and they did this kind of like what he called BBC like harnessing the power of BBC kind of ceremony, kind of spiritual ceremony that they did together. Wow. And then he was talking about um, like all the other stuff that they did surrounding that and with vows and everything like that. Oh my God. It was pretty cool. And then he talked a lot about race play. (laughs) One of probably the most controversial topics and we dove right in. (laughs) So... It was so fun. If you haven't listened to that episode, make sure you go back and listen to it. It is the previous one before this. And I had some really awesome feedback about that episode. It was a just a really interesting conversation. And guess what? Get this. Pagan is coming to Pillow Talk. My Pillow Talk live event is happening on Friday, August the 4th. Pagan is going to be joining me. And he's bringing along that couple that he did the ceremony with. And they're going to talk about all the details because we didn't get enough time in the in the show last time to go over all the juicy details about what went on there. 
So we're going to do this amazing pillow talk event and we're going to talk about exactly what that was about. It's going to be so, so much fun. So make sure that you tune in. That's going to be August 4th. It's a Friday. It's going to be at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern, and it is free to attend live. It's on Crowdcast. And all you need to do to register is just go to venuscuckoldress.com and click on the events page. And it is live free to attend live. If you do want to watch the replay, let's say you're at, stuck at work and you can't listen or can't watch or whatever, then you can watch the replay, but you do have to be a friends with benefits tier supporter or a helpful cup tier supporter. Those replays are included in those tiers and you can watch them all, all of the replays in the Queen's Quarters community. So there are perks and benefits to supporting the podcast. If you're interested in becoming a member of one of those tiers, you just go to venuscuckoldress.com, of course. (laughs) And also on the topic of pillow talk, I just had such an awesome pillow talk this month uh, recently with, it was called Big Cuck Energy. I had three amazing cucks who joined me on pillow talk and we talked about what? big cuck energy is, but also the whole fucking experience of cucks and cucks that come at it from different angles, different experiences, different perspectives. So it was so fucking insightful for me and so many people there. And they had such great advice. Again, if you missed it and you want to watch the replay, you can catch it in the Queen's Quarters community, venuscuckoldress.com to be a part of those tiers. So And last but not least, before we dive in, I just want to say thank you to whoever this is, Sagacious One, it's called. I don't know, you go by Sagacious One. Anyway, you left a five-star rating and you left a review on Apple and you said, you rock, Venus, keep at it, count me as another adoring fan. I just want to say, I don't know who you are, but thank you. (laughs) That was awesome. Thank you so much. I really am so appreciative of the ratings and reviews that people leave on Apple. So I'm just, thank you so much. Okay, that's it for announcements. You know what's coming up now? It is Rosa time. Let's get started. Here we go. Right, joining me on the show today, I have this amazing woman. She goes by the name of Rosa. You may have heard about her. She's pretty big on OnlyFans. I'm talking about the top 0.11%. That's pretty amazing. And she's here to talk about making content and her relationship. Welcome to the show, Rosa. Say hello to everyone. Hello. Hi. Thank you so, so much for having me. It's good to be here. Okay. And you're located in the UK, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, cool. Um, All right. So I'm so excited to get into this because um, your, I was looking at your Twitter profile and I was like, damn, this is some pretty fucking hot stuff that's on there. I think it was, um, it was either one of my fans that recommended you, or I think maybe it was Dimitri or could have been both uh, (laughs) that recommended you as a a good guest for the show. And I looked at your Twitter and I was like, "Uh uh-huh. So (laughs) it's pretty awesome what you've been able to build. How, how, Mm -hmm. like, how was your journey? I really don't know a lot about, about you, but um, Mm -hmm. what's your journey been like and how did you get to where you are at today at the top of OnlyFans? Wow. Uh, So yeah, I mean, it all started from a really real point with me and my husband. Uh, When we first met, I think it would be fair to say that we'd both, we were both sort of sexually mature and confident enough to kind of say really quite very, very early on in our relationship that monogamy was not for us. Traditional monogamy was just like a definite, definite no. Um, from there, we uh, we grew into doing what what I've come to term or termed at the time as like one sided swinging. So it would always be me who'd be there <laughs> having all this fun with guys. Um, he kind of likes to take a little bit of a backseat too. So I would often kind of send him sort of video clips, pictures to tease, um, and things like that. 
And then we'd been doing this for a number of years um, and we'd followed quite a few people, uh, you know, like through the website Fab Swingers. I don't know if you've come across that one before. Uh, it's like this swinging kind of network for the UK. And we started to see, it was around kind of like 2020, uh, especially when OnlyFans sort of had its its big boom. And we started to see lots of women who were just like me, who had kind of made this jump into OnlyFans from a swinging background. And they were saying like, wow, you know, posting screenshots of what they were doing. And it was, it was a slow creeper for me. I sort of didn't really kind of launch myself into it at first. Um, but yeah, it came to January 21. And I said, hey, you know, what have I got to lose? I will give this a go. And and then, yeah, OnlyFans sort of spiraled from there. <laughs> yeah, it blew up. You are like, you're really, really popular on there. So good for you. I love to see a great success story with powerful women. So good for you. That's awesome. So one-sided swinging, that's the first time I've heard of that. <laughs> I didn't really have the language to term it. You know, I, I'd sort of heard of what a hot wife was before and things like that. But obviously when we started out as well, we, we weren't married, of course. So it, it didn't really seem right. But <laughs> Wow. Okay. I, I've heard of this often where um, couples start out in swinging and then he realizes that he just really likes watching her and she really enjoys the kind of sexual freedom and being watched and things like that. So this is so common. It seems like um, there's a, a door from the swingers path that cu- that leads to cuckolding or hot wifing mm-hmm. or whatever you want to call it. So do you mm-hmm. consider yourself a hot wife or a cuckoldress? Both. Definitely okay. both. Definitely both. So I have like a really clear kind of hot wife relationship with my husband. Um, he's probably best termed. I mean, it's one of these things with language, isn't it? You know, uh, we, we just try and avoid it because it's sort of, it can kind of put you in a box. But then obviously with OnlyFans, you know, I have to use ways of advertising myself and things like that. Um, he's probably best termed as like a stag. Um, and then the cuckolding thing actually started after OnlyFans. Um, so it was a real, um, a real kind of journey for me. I was getting a lot of requests, um, from fans saying, can you do kind of more mistress content, more kind of SPH? Can you do more, more humiliation? Can you be a bit harder with this, you know? And I then started to watch a lot of Mistress Porn. Um, I was a huge fan. I still am a huge fan of Mistress T. Uh, I don't know if you've come across her before. She's uh, in, in, in Canada. Um, and and I was watching some of her stuff and I'm like, oh my God, this is really turning me on. Like this is definitely for me. Uh, so I gave Cook Holding a go with um, a sub who I'd met through uh, Fab Swingers, but that was the very, very first time. And I was like, it was almost like a sexual awakening, really. I can't really kind of term it uh, any other way than that. And since then, I've just been a huge fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how you said that it was like a sexual awakening. There is this, um, mm-hmm. I, f- from my experience, there's been le- this uh, real, I, ca- I would call it, yeah, a sexual awakening. But it is like this realization that you have this power over someone sexually that you probably don't even realize that you had. And when you tap into that, it's pretty amazing. But it can be daunting, I think, for a lot of women, especially when you do watch like cuck a lot of the cuck porn that's like, you know, heavy on the humiliation part or the BDSM porn or mistress porn or whatever. Um women can be like, oh, fuck, no, I could not do that. I could not do that. And I I totally get that. But when you kind of like slide into that and really kind of feel it, oh, my God, it is so, so amazing. So I totally get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. And so Mistress T, by the way, she's she's in the same city as me. <laughs> Oh, have you ever met? I've never met her. I've heard all about her, though. <laughs> Absolutely. You are a huge fan of her content. <laughs> it's so funny because, like, the city that I'm in is, like, pretty tame. So we've got two mm-hmm. fucking badass women in this city. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Okay. And so, um, so you had a sub. You had a sub friend who did a cuckolding mm-hmm. with 
you. So have you done cuckolding scenes with your partner, your, is it husband or? No. So yeah, so my husband isn't, is not into um, any sort of cuckolding, certainly the kind of humiliation aspect of that. He loves to watch, um, but isn't, doesn't want to sort of be humiliated, doesn't want to be made to feel inferior or anything like that. Um, but once I'd sort of tried this out for OnlyFans, I was so, so taken with it um, that he's quite happy for me to just sort of explore that with other guys. And uh, lots of men are quite happy to identify themselves as cooks and they're quite happy to feature on the page. So <laughs> it's fun. Isn't that interesting? And have I get this question a lot. So I want to ask you, guys ask me like, would I ever consider having more than one cuck partner, like in a real relationship? And I'm like, I don't know, that sounds kind of complicated, but <laughs> uh, have, have people asked you that, especially because you're kind of utilizing a cuck in these scenes and stuff, and it's not your partner. Do guys, are guys like signing up for that position? Like for real? Yeah, yeah. I have had other guys who've said you can only be in a cuckold relationship if you if you actually are together as well. And I've kind of said, I, I just think that definition is kind of too sort of black and white, so to speak. Um, I think that that people sort of can identify as submissive and then they might have, there's a whole, you know, there's a whole kind of range and spectrum of this uh, to explore, you know, from the very, very soft things to you know, the really, really hard end of it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's interesting. Sorry. I think I forgot what I was saying there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so would you take on an extra cuck, I guess, in your relationship? Um, as, as like a kind of, you mean like a romantic like a boyfriend? Person. Yeah. So I have kind of played around with this before, but it's only in the sense of having that kind of power dynamic. It's not a romantic thing for okay. sure. <laughs> okay. So kind of like, I don't want to say role playing, but like hmm. just a friends with cuck benefits. Yes. <laughs> that kind of sums it up perfectly. Yeah. Friends <laughs> with cuck benefits. Somebody who I have a connection with. I can't just, you know, sort of, I'm, I'm not a performer by any stretch. So I can't just kind of show up and dominate any guy who says, oh, you know, I really want this to happen. I have to have, have a connection for sure. So um, before any guy sort of appears in my scenes or anything like that, there'll always kind of be a background of sort of getting to know each other, uh, going out for drinks, talking about what turns us on and what we like and and, and where we are first, for sure. <laughs> so when it comes to cucky scenes, like what yeah. kind of stuff do does turn you on um, and what, what turns you off? <laughs> oh, I absolutely love my favorite scene just ever, my favorite thing to do by far is to have a guy who's locked in a cage, locked in chastity, who I'm humiliating while a guy who, who is more of an alpha is sort of fucking me and enjoying me. Um, and that for me is, is just the best thing ever, <laughs> for sure. Um, in terms of what turns me off, um, I think for me is that what is a turn off sometimes in, especially with some guys who I have had sort of cuckold, you could say relationships with, um, it's when they, they also don't have a total switch off point. I think that if they want to kind of constantly carry on this sort of role playing character that they don't really have, um, I guess that if they don't really have like too many levels to it, you know, if they're just constantly like, please do this, please do that, please do the other I think it can be a little bit too full on sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get that. I totally yeah. get that. There, it's, yeah. It gets a bit intense sometimes when cucks are very like um, needy, like <laughs> demanding and like, you're just like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like to get to know the person behind just whatever their sexual preference or fetish is as well. So, so I think, and I think for me that that's what, that kind of real connection is, I think, what makes my content and just the whole experience sort of uh, shine for me, I guess. 
What kind of other like dynamics do you incorporate into your content? I haven't watched much of it other than just scrolling through your Twitter profile, but um, like there's other things like you mentioned chastity is one of them. Mm-hmm. What about like things like pegging or cleanup or um, mm-hmm. uh, interracial? Are, are you into any of those too? Yeah, absolutely. All three, 100%. Uh, I love pegging. Absolutely love pegging. It was actually something that I only got into relatively recently. So sort of within the last kind of 10 months or so. But as soon as I did it for that first time, I was like, "Mm -hmm, yeah, (laughs) definitely. Um, Love pegging. Uh, Interracial content is something that, that I feel like that was kind of what I started out as as well so yeah um there's some amazing uh male performers as well uh to work with and sort of go on dates with and things in the UK um so yeah absolutely love that I absolutely love clean up um and and I also love how it turns on the 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 cook so much (laughs) um yeah absolutely I love that (laughs) Yeah, cleanup is pretty fucking awesome. So you when you were talking about interracial, you said you kind of started out that way. Does mm. do you mean that like that was a preference that you had a preference for yes. black men even yeah. before you started making content? Oh yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. Um so I think every single man I had a sort you could call it a kind of hot wife date or swinging meet with kind of prior to starting OnlyFans was black. Yeah, definitely my preference for sure. <laughs> Okay, so everyone who's listening to this podcast knows I fucking really enjoy black men. (laughs) But and there's a lot of reasons why I do. But what are the reasons why you seem to be drawn more to like the black men when it comes to sexuality? I feel like all of the experiences that I've had, I've been just so I just feel like I feel like a lot of the time, I mean, it's quite difficult because I haven't actually met that many white men in the swinging community, but I feel like I've always been treated like a lady, but then at the same time, I've always been treated like a filthy whore and I love that kind of dynamic. Um, so it's, yeah, to be honest, any guy who can kind of do both of those things really, really well, you know, can kind of uh, sort of be polite and be a gentleman and, you know, we can have amazing conversation and we have that chemistry together, but then can also, you know, treat me like a filthy slut in bed, <laughs> You know, that, that's that's just perfect for me. So <laughs> that's the criteria, I would say, more than perhaps race. Yeah. It's interesting. You said you didn't really come across a lot of like white guys in the swinging when you were doing the swinging thing. Really? Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I've had the opposite um, experience. <laughs> like it's barely any black men in the city I live in. But um, so that's interesting. So this has been like a longstanding interest for you with black men. Do you... Yeah. Are you exclusive to black men when it comes to lovers or no? No, okay. not at all. No, no exclusivity. Okay. So do you identify with that um, label queen of spades or no? Um, I think definitely I do identify with the label. It was a label though that was kind of put to me after I started OnlyFans. Um, some people have suggested that this is a little bit of perhaps potentially it's a racist label. So, you know, it's, it's, it's one of them, you know, if people refer to me as it, I say, yes, okay, cool. But if anyone says, Ooh, you know, I'm just like, that's okay. I'm just a hot wife. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely controversial in some circles for sure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, okay. And then how, look, what are the most common types of, requests that you get for content from from your gazillion fans that you have um I think my definitely my most popular content is when I am just enjoying myself I think that this is this is one of the comments that I got I remember kind of so early on so early on with posting videos to OnlyFans you know And people were saying, you can really tell that you're actually having a good time and that you're actually enjoying yourself. Um, And and this isn't fake. And I was like, well, it's not fake. None of this is set up. These are all real hot wife dates. Um, So I think that I'm probably kind of at my apex when I'm just really enjoying dick. (laughs) You know, (laughs) that's probably uh, sort of sort of that. Um, But I do get I get lots of uh, fetish requests, too. So I have 
a lot of my fans identify as cooks, whether they're sort of out or, you know, that's just an online thing for them. So I get lots of requests for things like chastity, pegging, um, cleaning up, you know, being forced to watch. And then I've also recently had requests that I would say are more on, I hate the word extreme because it's it's a bit of a weasel word, but I would say, you know, more at the extreme end of the spectrum, things like forced by. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a vast, vast range really. Yeah. There's a lot of different kind of kinky dynamics that overlap with cuckolding and hot wifing and inter- intertwine. They don't certainly don't have to be there in that kind of relationship, but um, there's a lot of different avenues to go down within yeah. this kind of relationship. So so you're really successful with OnlyFans. You're loving it. You're having a great time. You're doing really well with it. Mm-hmm. How has this been for your relationship with your husband? Amazing. Uh, yeah, we've, we sort of, so we've been doing this now. So where are we? We're in like July 23. So the only fan side of things has been since like January 21. So we're about two and a half years into our OnlyFans journey. And I would say there was easily definitely a point, perhaps it was roughly about a year ago when we were like, whoa, this is sort of, you know, we, we have obviously like, like work to do on OnlyFans. You know, the video that you see is, is, is sort of the tip of the iceberg as it, as it were. And there's lots of work that goes in behind kind of promoting it, um, chatting to fans and things like that, which I really enjoy. So one of the things that me and my husband have found, which really, really work for us is, um, actually having, you know, a separation between the two. So we still have dates uh, and hot wife experiences that have absolutely nothing to do with OnlyFans. So there won't be a camera involved. I obviously won't be wearing a mask um, and it will just be just for us. And I think that that's something that has definitely made it better um, and made it kind of, um, you know, I guess easier (laughs) in certain ways. Um, We continue to communicate. um, we we also have like agreed uh, sort of switch off times as well because you know OnlyFans can be really um, you know overwhelming at times. I think uh, even just having a TikTok going viral, for example, you have to kind of really monitor sort of what people are saying in the comments, having to like, delete some nasty things and things like that. Yeah. Um, so we have agreed days that are just for us to spend time together. Yeah, in the week. Yeah, setting those boundaries are really important. Mm-hmm. I think people in the online world can forget that you're not available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that you actually have, you know, real life stuff that you have to, you know, mm-hmm. pay attention to and, and invest your time into, obviously. So um, that's really good that you guys have learned to do that. Have you come across any kind of like stumbling blocks along the way when it's come, when it's been, I guess, your journey between like swinging into mm-hmm. more content creation slash hot wife and cuckolding, any kind of like spots where you were like, oh, that was tough to mm-hmm. navigate through or, it, you know, we had to talk more about that or whatever. No, actually, weirdly enough, it felt almost like a very, very natural progression um, and I would also say that lots of the guys who I, I see who, who are sort of OnlyFans creators as well, pretty much like 90% of those guys came from their own background in sort of swinging and hot wifing and coming kind of from that community anyway. So it actually sort of just felt like it was the, the most natural thing to do. I remember, I don't say these things anymore, um, but I remember kind of on some of my sort of first shoots within sort of the first kind of year of being on OnlyFans, I was like, I'd, 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 phone, um, I'd phone my husband if he wasn't there and I'd say, why have, not, why have we not been doing this for like the last, you know, all of these other years? Um, it just sort of felt really natural. I think one of my stumbling blocks has been sort of the mental health aspects around online exposure. So you do get a lot of nasty comments and horrible people, not those who are subscribed to your OnlyFans. It generally tends to be from social media. So sort of the odd few on Twitter and TikTok especially is is rife. Um, So for me, my kind of main stumbling block was learning not to engage with these people. Um, and learning to sort of kind of shut it off and close it off and get a bit of thicker skin. 
I think that's been my my main issue. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you know you've made it when the haters show up. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. I get that too. So I wanted to ask you about um, the bad behavior of some people online. So mm-hmm. have you, I know it's been a, a big worry for me, a big concern for me. Um, and I've had bad experiences in the past with guys who turn out to be psychotic stalkers mm-hmm. who make a point of trying to like harass you and it's pretty scary place sometimes online for women have you had any issues with that I have had a couple of people on TikTok um there was one who um a woman actually or or I don't know for, for certain that this person was female that was just how they presented themselves um, who uh, was pretending that she knew me in real life. She she didn't at all. Um, and there was loads of evidence to suggest that, but was was constantly kind of saying, um, so I'd sort of say post a TikTok about something and she'd say, oh, well, that's not what your husband really thinks. Or, oh, that's not what your best friend told me and all this kind of stuff. And I found that really quite creepy. Yeah. Um, uh, she just got blocked, of course, in the end um, and didn't resurface. Um yeah, and there was um, there was another guy on TikTok who posted a what was it? Who he was like kind of trying to pretend to be me. He changed his profile picture to one of me and was giving me some really um, it was pretty horrendous abuse uh, for quite a while. But then in the end, again, you just kind of block and hope that they don't sprout up again. So mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I've noticed that um in your videos and stuff like that, you do have your full face, but it you're partially veiled with like a, a lace thing, which is cool by the way. I like that. <laughs> um <laughs> so I'm assuming that you're trying to, you know, preserve some of your privacy for 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 your personal life. How mm-hmm. has that been for you? Has that been pretty successful or do you worry yeah. about that? Well, um, to be honest, when I first started OnlyFans, I I honestly did not think that I would get to where I am now. You know, it it, it completely, completely blew my mind. So my my aim when I started was just like, you know, maybe if this could be like a nice little side hustle, you know, maybe if this could afford me an extra holiday a year or a new car or whatever, I did not have big plans or any big financial goals and um I know that this is is sort of more it kind of clouds my identity rather than completely covers it and it was just yeah I think you kind of said it yourself it was just to have that extra layer of protection where you know if I really didn't like it or it got too much I could just you know delete the account dip my toes back out of the water and hopefully nobody would ever know um there was certainly that element of it but it was probably um, it was probably about eight months after I started. So this was sort of the the August, uh, June, July, August, sort of uh, in twenty one. My account just suddenly got got kind of so big with so many fans on it that I realised that keeping my identity completely covered was just not an option anymore. I had to either you know trail the marketing back, kind of you know slow it down. Or I could just say, screw this, uh, let's go. Um, and that was what I chose. I chose to just continue. Um, and yeah, you know, my um, my family know, uh, my friends know. Um, so all the people who I love and care about in my life know and and are and are okay with it. So so yeah. Okay, that's super awesome. Okay, your friends and family. So did you have to like sit down and tell them about it then? <laughs> How did that go? <laughs> so what happened? Um, I told my mum first. Um, it was actually over Christmas um, and I, I'd got a bit drunk um, and I just decided to kind of come out with this. I wasn't planning on telling her. Um, and her first word was, it was quite funny. She said, does your husband know? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> like she thought I was doing all of this in secret. Um, but yeah, my mum was super supportive. And then when I eventually told my dad, my dad was like really, really curious. He wanted to know kind of the ins and outs of how it all works. Um, yeah. And then, uh, my brother, um, my brother actually came across me on TikTok. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God. (laughs) 
<laughs> it was really funny. I freaked out actually. He sent me a um, he sent me like a DM. Uh, I was I was away at the time. I was on holiday having dinner, and he was just like, "Hey, um, I've just come across this woman on TikTok, and my God, she looks an awful lot like you." <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> but yeah, it's me. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow that's amazing but now it's kind of I'm sure it feels like a you know pressure off your shoulders like okay these people already know they're supportive and whatever and so you know you know pr- your personal privacy is important but it mm-hmm. probably feels like it's you know not as a big of a fear as it probably once was right absolutely yeah it was something I used to really worry about just just you know because it is a huge deal. And and whether we like it or not, people have these perceptions and these stigmas about people who, who, who have crazy sex and people who put it online. And, and I was, yeah, I was really apprehensive about it, but I'm glad that I was open uh, because now I don't have to think about it anymore. I can be open. I can say, oh, I'm really busy. I can't talk right now. I'm I'm doing something else. <laughs> or, um, you know, if I ever have a problem as well or anything that I need to talk to, I don't just have my husband. I have a load of other people who who will happily listen and, and chat to me. And, and that's lovely. That's so great. That's so great. Yeah. Um, okay. And so you said you kind of delved into the cuckolding aspect once you started doing your OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. What have you learned about that word cuck or cuckold or the stigma that's often attached mm-hmm. to it? Mm-hmm. I feel, uh, I think one of the key things that I've learned is that many men who do have submissive tendencies or who essentially are what I would call a cook are very, very, very scared to use the term. I think that the term is got all of these horrible negative connotations. I mean, obviously, if you look at kind of the orange, the origins of the language as well, kind of where it comes from was literally that fear of having your wife cheat on you and and, and you as a man would have to raise another man's child. That's where that's where the word comes from. And I think that that, that very, very much still sort of translates to today. Um, it, it has got these kind of associations with cheating or with uh, being weak. Um, and and I feel like I feel like the word has got kind of a lot to do. I think that I think that cuckolding needs to be put more in kind of the public eye. So lots of people understand it, even if it's not something that they want to do themselves. I feel like I just want it to be I just want it to be more accepted. You know, I want men to be able to say, oh, you know, actually, I really do want to be pegged or I do want to be tied up or this or that, whatever it is, and not feel that that is shameful. Yeah. That's, that's all I want. Yeah. Oh, I feel the same way. I've talked a lot on the show about how cucks really are not weak. (laughs) And actually, the research, it backs that up. Cucks have actual higher levels of self-esteem than the average person. So, um, and confidence. So it's interesting that there is all of this stigma. And I do also find it quite heartbreaking that someone can't be proud of who they are and their own sexual desires. Um, that they have to feel ashamed. And for some men out there, this is crushing shame. They literally hate this side of them because they're like, why do I have to be into that of all things? Why do I have to be into that? Now that means that I am weak, that I'm pathetic, that I, you know, like to be, you know, spat on or yeah. you know, led around on it with a collar mm-hmm. and leash with no clothes on like they they feel like all of this and it's devastating to them it's devastating to them on so many levels not just to themselves but to their for their relationships as well for their overall mental health and why why the fuck does it have to be that way yeah. cucks are amazing they are the most amazing fucking partners ever yeah, absolutely. I learned. I just put something on Twitter the other day. Uh, appreciation for cucks out there. I learn so yeah. much from cucks. They inspire mm-hmm. me so much. And if you yeah. know, I just wish that cucks out there would hear that and feel that and know that there's women out there who love them just for the way that they are. You mm-hmm. know, wouldn't absolutely. change you at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're so, so right. I just feel like it needs to become way more accepted. And 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 I I love 
what I love is, is I obviously speak to so many of these men on a daily basis, uh, you know, and, and what I love is that not no two are the same, you know, yes. they, they come at this from a very, very different perspective. They're living in different social contexts, different cultures and, and, and also their interests, you know, I don't think that just, just this one thing, this one word kind of cook can put all of these people in a box. I just think that they are quite, they're such a diverse kind of group of people as well, you know, and, yes. and that's what I find so interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of guys out there who are cucks who are just scared to use that word. And so they'll come up with any other word <laughs> other than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, man, it's okay. Like, uh, you, you can be cuck, you can be proud of who you are. So I'm so glad that you feel that way, too. I really do hope that more people learn about that, understand mm -hmm. that in that context, and that it is more... Uh, more understood because there's so, so many things that people don't understand that are misrepresented in this lifestyle about what cuckolding is and, and isn't. So, um, okay. Before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you, what are, do you have any kind of like fucking hilarious, funny stories about any kind of shoots that you've done for your content? Like I want to hear it because I'm assuming that you've come across all sorts of things. God, I mean, it's it's where do you even start? To be honest, I have I have all of these stories. You know, I, I can't wait to have enough time to actually sit down and write a book or a blog. I could just I could fill tomes seriously with the things that have gone on. I think definitely if we're going to talk about a sort of a funny kind of cook moment. Um, it was when uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar at all with Mr. Black. Um, Mr. Black again kind of came from a, you know he's very very similar to me that his his background. It, was rooted in reality you know he's not a performer um in that sense uh, me and mr black know each other really really well he's a regular person who i meet uh, we've got a fantastic relationship and he said um there's this guy and he really really wants to do uh, do some cook stuff with us and i'm like okay cool uh, so i had i had a chat with this guy um and and one of the things that I loved is that he is not, he doesn't have a small dick, you know, he actually had something that was really quite <laughs> something to be, um, how would I say that? Sorry. Size <laughs> queen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He, he, so, so this guy, he sort of shows up and he has this absolutely huge dick. And that's one of the things that I love, that it doesn't actually matter what size you have, that you can still kind of have all these ideas and have all of these fantasies and these sexual desires and that it actually isn't related to size whatsoever. Um, so that was wonderful to spend time with him. So I met him uh, earlier on in the day before Mr. Black was going to arrive in the evening and, and he and I were sort of getting to know each other. Um, by the time Mr. Black arrived, uh, we were actually in the middle of doing a kind of a cock humiliation scene. So this is something that I absolutely love to do. It's when I ask a cook to put on a huge strap on. So he's got like a huge kind of cock and lock his, and lock his dick in a cage and humiliate him as he is essentially getting to fuck me, but not really with his dick. And we were doing this um, and Mr. Black sort of showed up and stood in the corner and he was like, and he got his phone out and was filming, you know, kind of from, from his perspective. And he was kind of getting himself really, really warmed up and ready and hard because he knew that soon he was going to come in um, and, and have fun with me. And afterwards, we just joked about it. He said, you're literally cooking both of us right now. I'm here kind of watching this guy who's a cook fuck you with this huge strap on. And I'm like, wow, I'm enjoying it. Um, and that and that was just a, a really funny moment to show that these roles and, and you know, it really, really taught me that these roles are not kind of black and white. They're not so clearly defined. And I think people dip in and out of them more times than they realize perhaps. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so funny. Until you said it, I didn't think of it, but it's so right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh my God. Yeah, that is a really fun thing to do. Have I've heard this often where um, women will lock their husband in chastity and then have him either put it like a strap on or some sort of attachment. And so he's 
Mm. Yeah, he's having sex, but he can't feel anything. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that so much. It really, really turns me on to do that. Yeah. Do you say do you say stuff to him while you're doing that? Like, uh, I don't know what, I, like humiliating, teasing things that you would say to him. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I love saying things like, oh, your cock just could never kind of touch the places that this huge strap on is sort of doing right now. Um, and, you know, I bet you wish you could feel every yeah. inch of me, you know, but you can't. <laughs> just imagine what it feels like to reach those depths. <laughs> yeah. Imagine what it would feel to have my wet pussy sliding all over you right now. And I just, I, I love the, um, it's interesting that you've touched on that because I love the talking aspect of, of cuckolding. I, you know, we haven't really touched on that so far. And I feel like that is one of the main elements of it for me is, is the things that we say rather than just what we do, you know? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I think a lot of that is lacking in, from what I've seen, um, in traditional mainstream, I guess, professional porn, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to cuck porn, the, the, those little instances of off the cuff comments yeah. and guys love that when it's amateur cuck porn and she says something that they're, they're able to hear it and to catch it or there's a look that accompanies it and they're just like oh my god you know that video at 14 minutes and 13 seconds where she says that oh that's amazing <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> but I think a lot of the um the emphasis on cuck porn is where she's fucking the other dude, but I'm like, there's so much fun to be had with those little teasing comments, those, the lead up to it, the moments afterwards that we're missing out on 80% of the fun part of cuckolding mm -hmm. when it comes sure. to porn. Definitely. I feel like talking and sort of, you know, it, it sort of comes naturally to me. It was not something that I'd really considered. I did very much. Um, I just kind of did what does naturally. And I talk all the way through all of my sex scenes. In fact, I actually have lots of things that I've filmed where it, it literally might just be my cook is holding the camera um, and is just, is just kind of filming me talking to him. And, and I, I love doing things like that. Uh, yeah. The talking is um, something I really enjoy for sure. For That's sure. awesome. <laughs> now I know that your husband identifies as a stag, but, mm -hmm. but since you love these little comments, these little talking bits and things like that, has it trickled over to your husband <laughs> at all? I'm working on him. <laughs> um, no, seriously, that's just never been our dynamic. Um, I'm a huge switch. Um, obviously, that's kind of pictured very, very much in in sort of the, the interracial cook scenes that I do where I'm sort of being dominated and dominating at the same time. Um, I'm a huge switch and mine, my husband's dynamic has always been where where I am. I am the, the little sub and he is sort of the, the kind of the overpowering dominant alpha male. And I don't think I think that while I've occasionally made jokes and things like that, I don't think that they've landed very well. <laughs> So I think we will sort of probably stick to what we know yeah. um, and I will just continue to enjoy my, my cook relationships with my cooks. Um, yeah, yeah. See, sometimes like the relationship is more about compersion than it is about the teasing and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This conversation has been fascinating. I've thoroughly enjoyed talking to you, Rosa. Um, before we say goodbye, where can people learn more about you, find your content, that sort of thing? Absolutely. So I think uh, the best place to go would be my main OnlyFans account, and that is at, and then it's Rosalind uh, XXX. Um, and my Twitter is uh, Amateur Rosa, um, and that is pretty much where most of my things are. There's also a link to my website on my Twitter, which has all of my links sort of together in one right. place. So yeah, that's where okay. I send people. <laughs> And I will post those links in the show notes for today. Rosa, thank you so much for being my guest on the show. It has been so much fun. Thank you so much, Venus. Honestly, thank you for having me. And thank you for popping my podcast, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and that is a wrap for today's show. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget, August 4th, it's a Friday. We're having a Pillow Talk event with Pagan and the couple who did the ceremony with the super sexy ceremony. 
That is August 4th at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Catch it live on Crowdcast. Just go to venuscuckoldress.com, click on the events page, and you can register for free for the event. And also on the events page, you can get information about how I will be live on the radio, GTFO Radio, on August 15th. I'll have a special guest with me. It's going to be live at 12 p.m. Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern. So just check that out on the events page for the information about how you can listen in. It's going to be so much fun. One last thing. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. My handle is at V. That's going to be it for today. We'll see you next time. Are you single and looking for a female-led relationship? Now there's a boutique-style private matchmaking service for FLR relationship dynamics. It's called Venus Connections. It's totally private. There's no scrolling through profiles or messaging other members. All of the matchmaking is done behind the scenes. You can learn more at venusconnections.com. That's venusconnections.com.